Defining and creating projects. Before you can begin using Project 2016 to manage your project, you have to take the time to develop the scope of the project. Although the purpose of this course is to teach you how to use Project 2016, Project 2016 can only manage the information about the project that you give it. For that reason, it is important to have everything organised and planned before you even start to use the program. By definition, a project charter is a document that authorises or recognises a project. It is usually created by the project manager with the help of the project sponsor. And it functions as an agreement that states the purpose and objectives of the project. You'll want to develop a project charter before you start to use Project 2016 so all of your objectives are laid out in front of you and you know what needs to be done and how. This is information you will need to successfully manage the project with Project 2016. Your project charter should contain all or most of the points listed here, depending on the nature and the scope of your project. The purpose of the project as well as a description. Objectives, the requirements, milestones, budget, and the name of the project manager. You can use a simple Word document to create your project charter. Take a look at the basic template we've created here. You can use this for your project charter or create your own. The project scope can be an independent document or part of a project charter, as shown in the previous slide in this lesson. A project scope is a document that helps you plan out and visualise a project before the actual project ever begins. It contains project goals, deliverables, tasks, costs and deadlines. In addition, you want to include the boundaries of the project, the team members, process for verification and approval of the completed work, and guidelines for decision making and changes to the project. You'll use the information you enter into your project scope in project, both to get started and to manage your project from beginning until end. If you bypass the project scope in favour of going straight to project, you'll likely forget the important details that will hamper your project's progress. A project is made up of tasks. Your project may have 10 tasks, or it may have 500. Tasks are steps that must be completed. Each task moves you one step forward to completing the project. We can use the analogy of a staircase to better explain the relationship between tasks and projects. For example, you want to build a stairwell and you know it must contain 20 steps. However, you have to build one step at a time in order to reach the top and complete the stairwell. Think of tasks as the steps to get you where you want to go with the project. That said, your tasks must be planned out in order for your project to be successfully completed. If you want, you can open up Project 2016, create a new project, and immediately start entering tasks. You can plan and create your entire project within Project. However, for larger projects, this typically is not a successful way of doing things because you may overlook a task that needs to be done. You are more focused on entering data into the program and populating it with tasks instead of planning tasks to manage with the program so the project is successfully completed. The fact is that tasks need to be planned out just as projects do. What tasks must be completed before other tasks begin? This question, as well as others, will be the ones that you want to answer before you start inputting information into Project 2016. You have to plan before you can manage, and you have to realise that Project 2016 is a project management program. You still have to plan. To plan your tasks, it helps to create a work breakdown structure, or WBS. This will be a visual representation of the hierarchy of the tasks associated with your project. You create a WBS by looking at the project as a whole, breaking it down into large parts, breaking those large parts into smaller parts, and then breaking down those smaller parts until you have exact deliverables, or tasks. In other words, what do you have to do to accomplish a large part of the project? What do you have to accomplish in order to accomplish these things, and so on. You can use an organisational chart or an outline to create a WBS. Once you've defined your project, it's time to begin in Project 2016. The first step in creating a project in Project 2016 is selecting a template to use, as we discussed in the previous lesson. You can choose a pre-designed template or simply use a blank one. For this course, we will use a blank template. 
The next step after you've selected a template and created a new project is entering information about your project. This information includes the start and end dates for your project. To enter this information, go to the Project tab. Then click on the Project Information button in the Properties group. You'll then see this dialog box. Enter the information about your project. The start and finish dates. If your project is scheduled forward from the date it starts, only enter the start date. If you are scheduling back from the finish date, for example, scheduling to meet a deadline, enter a finish date. Schedule from. Tasks can be scheduled backward or forward. Typically, it is forward from the start date. Current date. This will match the settings on your computer. You can change that if you need to list a different date. Status date. It is a good idea to set the current date in order to track progress. You will want to progress on the project in real time. Calendar. Click the drop down box and select a calendar. Priority. You will want to set this if you have many projects and want to link them together. It can also be helpful if you use the resource leveling tool that we'll talk about later in this course. Click OK when you're finished. Once you've created a new project and entered the project information, it's time, you're, it's time to save your project for the first time. Saving your project regularly reduces the risk of losing important information if something should happen with your computer. That said, before you save your project for the first time, it's a good idea to create a folder in which to store your project files. Create the folder in a location on your computer, such as Documents. Give the folder a name, which will easily identify it as your project. Next, go back to Project, then click on the File tab to go to the Backstage view. You have two choices when you save a project. You can save it under the current file name in the current location, if you've saved the project before, by clicking Save on the left here. You can also go to Save As on the left, if you're saving the project for the first time, or if you want to rename your project or save it in a different location. Let's select Save As. First, choose where you want to save the file. You can save it to OneDrive, which is Microsoft's cloud storage, this PC, or your computer. Or you can add a place, such as SharePoint. Let's choose this PC. As you can see here, we can now see our documents and desktop folders. If the folder you created for your project is stored in one of these folders, click on the folder. If you don't see the folder, click on the Browse button and locate the folder on your computer. You'll be shown a screen that looks like this. In the File Name field, enter a name for your project. In the Save As Type field, choose a file format. MPP is the default file format and allows you to open and work on your project in Microsoft Project as a later date. The MPP is also just called Project Type. Once you've finished, click on Save. File types are simply the formats you can use to save your project files. We encountered file types earlier in this lesson when we used the save as command. Project supports numerous file types. You can open and save aspects of your project in the following formats. However, some formats only allow you to save information contained in project fields. Microsoft Project Plan or MPP. This is a standard file format for your projects. It uses the .mpp extension. Microsoft Project 2007. Project 2016 supports the opening and saving of files from Project 2007. Microsoft Project 2000 to 2003 file. Project 2016 supports the opening and saving of files from Project 2000 to 2002, as well as 2003. Project Template, MPT, and Microsoft Project 2007 template. These are template files that save information you will use in other projects. It is just like a template for a website, except it is for a project. It uses the .mpt extension. The global file, global.mpt, is the master template. It can contain information for all projects, but it cannot save tasks, resources or assignments. PDF files. This format is the portable document format. It has the extension .pdf. And XPS files. XPS is Microsoft's version of a PDF. 
Excel Binary Workbook uses the file extension .xlsb. Excel Workbook or Excel 97 to 2003 Notebook. You can export your field data to this format, but you cannot export entire projects. Text. This format is commonly used by word processing programs. It uses the .txt extension and is tab delimited. You can export field data to this format, but you cannot export entire projects. Comma separated values or CSV. This format uses the .csv extension and is comma delimited. You can export field data to this format, but you cannot export entire projects. An extensible markup language or XML. This format is used to deliver rich and structured data. It uses the .xml extension. You can import and export data using this format. It can also be used to interchange data from project between project and other programs.